Houston, say again, please. Uh, Houston, we've had a problem. Hey there folks, welcome you all to yet another Friday vlog of mine. Another Friday has caught up with us people. Yes, it has. Another lockdown Friday at that. We are all still trapped. <laughs> In our own little kingdoms, people. Yes, we are. We do have a few gaming things to talk about, but I'll just kick off by explaining what I've been up to this week. Because as you will know, and you will have noticed, I have not been posting up any gameplay this week. And the main reason for that is, as all of you know from my little birthday vlog where I was a little bit slurry on Monday. <laughs> still there if you want to go and watch it. Thank you to everyone, by the way, who wished me a happy birthday for Monday. It's always lovely to get birthday wishes, people. Even though, you know, as people, we're kind of like, oh, it doesn't matter, but it does. <laughs> it really does matter when you get a card, and it really does matter when somebody just says happy birthday or goes out of the way to, to wish you a nice day. So thank you to you all who wished me a happy birthday. And, yeah, so I took this week off as annual leave because, um, unlike a lot of people, I'm fortunate enough to still be able to do my job um, and get paid through all of this nightmare that we're in. So I'm very fortunate in that regard. However, I do have about three weeks worth of holiday to use up before July. So I decided to use it this week and get the decking done. And don't worry, I'm not going to talk about the decking. <laughs> Spent far too long talking about the decking, people. But that went, but but I did, uh, well, I will talk about it just a tiny bit. So I spent a... Yeah, by the time we got to Monday, uh, I'd spent the entirety of Sunday getting the decking completely stripped of all staining that was on it before and I did a really good job actually and um, I may throw some footage up to show you before and after very briefly but I haven't put the new stainer on yet because from Tuesday onward it started to rain so I managed to get it stripped down which isn't necessarily a bad thing but you've got to you've got to leave it a couple of days to totally dry out before you put the new stainer on so I may or may not be taking next week off. At the moment, it's looking like I might do because the weather's supposed to be really, really good now. When I looked at it a number of days back, it said it was going to be peeing it down. Well, I say a number of days back. When I looked at it last Monday, it said it was going to be really damp and wet this week. And now that I look at the app for the next coming week, it's telling me it's going to be really nice. It's a mix of cloud and sun, but no rain until Saturday, I think, next week. So I think we're in for a bit of a good and Certainly, I might be able to do the staining on Sunday. But I'm really chuffed with the amount of the stainer I managed to get off. I have really got it back to its natural wood. And anywhere there's little bits of mahogany still peeking up, I think they'll just look like blemishes once I get the new stainer on. Um, but you can't really see most of it to the naked eye, to be honest. Uh, it's only when you get a bit closer to it. So I'm really chuffed with how it all came out. But my God, it was hard work. I, I, wor I was working on it from... The neighbours must have hated me. <laughs> the noise that the jet sprayer was making when I was trying to get it all off after putting the stripper down um, was quite a lot. And I was, I was basically working on it from 9am on Sunday morning all the way through to 5pm on Sunday night. It was pretty much non-stop. I was absolutely knackered and I was quite cold as well because we were in my shorts and it wasn't a particularly sunny day. It was it was cloudy, it didn't rain. but um, So yeah, so I was really chuffed with how it all came out and hopefully I'll have thrown up a before and after behind me. But um, yeah, I'm I'm now looking to get the, the, the new stainer on and once I get that on, it should look really, really nice. I mean, it's kind of a shame. Like I bought the stainer now and there's a bit of me that, that's kind of thinking I wish I'd just bought, you know, the oil varnish type stuff and just keep the colour that's there with the tint. Um, but I bought, I have bought a wood type colour, not a dark one. Um, it's called cedar. Um, so I think it's got a little bit of a, a reddish tint to it, but it is brown, unlike mahogany, which is like just really dark. It's more of a sort of proper natural wood type colour from what I can see anyway on the tin. So yeah, I'm looking forward to getting that down and then being able to enjoy the the deck in. I also I also screwed it all down. I've got a, the the power combi drill which I bought. Awesome. <laughs> and I just bought the decking screws and I was just like vroom, just putting all the screws down. All the boards are really tight and solid now, and there, there were a lot of loose ones before. So I'm really really chuffed with how it's come out. I'm just looking for the. Oh, the other thing was there's a cherry blossom tree at the bottom of the garden which has blossomed. So all of the petals are constantly raining down on the decking. So if I try, even if I had got the weather last weekend, I probably wouldn't have done it because there was just constant petals falling down. And if you paint in and then they fall on it, they'll just get stuck in it. So I'm hoping by the time I do come to do it Sunday, Monday or whatever, then um, that'll have stopped because a lot of the blossom has gone now. 
So yeah, so that was that was kind of the beginning of my week. Monday then was just a chill day, enjoying my birthday. I uh, started that off with a, a 10k, well it was 12k run actually in the morning, um, which I probably told you about in the in that little blog I did on the, the blog I did on my birthday in the evening and then yeah and then finished off the, well I managed to talk to family got to see my dad we kept apart but got to see him for a bit uh talked to my brother and uh, my nephew on FaceTime and uh yeah so it was just nice nice and um had a chill out day and the rest of the week the Tuesday was a chill out day binge watching telly and then I got full on stuck into Final Fantasy 7 remake and I got uh, yeah, I've got, well, nearly three days worth of proper good time on it. I, I didn't check my time before I finished today. But that's the main reason that I haven't done any recording at all for the channel is because I've just got totally engrossed in playing Final Fantasy VII. And it's actually been, again, it's been quite nice to just step back and just enjoy a game for being a game without having to... Because I know, like, I, I do enjoy putting the stuff up for you guys, but there is a point where it becomes... It starts feeling a bit like work, so you need to step back a little bit. Because it's not just a case of me recording. I've, I've had... I tell you this all the time, but it's not just a case of me sitting recording and then the stuff set, uploads itself. Like, I've got, I've got a... Um, I don't edit my videos unless it's really necessary. So you always get the full recording chopped off at the beginning and end with an intro and an outro. But just to put the intro and outro on, I've got to stick all that into a piece of, of editing kit. And I've got templates for it. I always make a template for each game and then it's dead quick after that so far as piecing it together. But then I've got to wait for an hour to, for it to render. Then I've got to post it up to YouTube and put all the bits of information in. And, you know, there's quite a bit to fill in. So it's not just a case of recording and it's dead easy. You know, there is work behind it. And then there's also one of the biggest things is that when I play a game for you guys and, and for putting them up on YouTube, I always want to mark, I always want to make a note of the the quests I'm doing or the places that I've visited or, you know, information about that particular episode. So while I'm playing it, I've got to jot all that stuff down. So sometimes it's nice just to step away from that and just enjoy a game for being a game. And Final Fantasy VII was a good a good option for that uh, because I didn't feel like the channel needed it. There was already a gazillion people playing that online anyway. Um, and I've just thoroughly enjoyed getting into it. It's a really, really good game. I mean, it, it it feels like a Final Fantasy game, although the battle mechanic... It's an interesting battle mechanic because it's not it's not turn-based anymore. So it, it's it's more... But it's there is an element of it that still feels Final Fantasy, though. Once you get used to what it is that you're doing. I understand the people that have told me that I think... Uh, Sir Robert maybe told me he didn't like the battle mechanic. I got It took me a good... 10 hours of gameplay to, to actually start enjoying it um, and even now I still I, fi I think it's actually harder it's harder than it used to be because it's keeping you on your toes all the time I mean you can always bring the battle down to a, a, a almost a standstill it goes into that very slow motion-y type thing when you hit the X and you know you, you get to then pick a move out of any character you want to kick off and let them go and then move to the other character and blah. so you can still tell characters what to do jump about all that sort of stuff but um you have got the ability to to free run and smack the sword just to build up your atb bar to get your big power moves and your big power moves is where the damage is at so and and my son my son aaron brew he he said um that it reminded him a lot of kingdom hearts now i can't vouch for that because i've never actually played kingdom hearts what i know i know it passed me by that one all those games um, so he, he says it, it reminds him a lot of that with a bit of Final Fantasy 13 so far as the ATB bar goes in um, and getting that built up and stamina bars and that sort of thing. So, but it is, the boss fights are really tough and they can take ages to get through. Um, to play it on hard, I believe if you want to play it on hard, you're not allowed to use any items and it's more difficult as well. Uh, and I've I've got pretty far without having to rely on items really and then uh, a couple of the boss fights i've just had to cave in because i wanted to test myself to see whether i could do it without so there's certain things cropping up now where it's like right might need more than one of those like a revival materia um or to be honest the one that always 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 catches you out is running out of of mp so if you run out of magical power then you know and the only thing to top that up is an ether or a potent ether is it a, a one that does both your health and the thing something like that 
So, you know, that's the thing that's always going to catch you out in hard mode, I think, because there's no way... Uh, well, there is ether regen. So you, there is a way of building up ether in a battle. It's very, very slow. There might be ways of making that faster that might help you out if you're not using items, but uh, some of the boss fights, there's only two of you in it. So I think there was there was there was one there was only me was there? Oh yeah, well, uh, I know I can't remember now. But certainly there's a lot of times there's only two of you and not a party of three. So you know it does get tricky. It does get tricky, and and the boss fights are. I mean they, you feel good after them. I mean it's it's of of the like of the sort of Dark Souls type <laughs> type stuff, you know, because um, they've got bars that go down very slowly. So anyway, I mean, the long and the short of it is I've just sort of got really engrossed in it and I'm thoroughly enjoying it. Um, I think there is still a little bit of a cheek to it so far as my Craigie Boy bought it and he bought the Platinum Edition. Now, Craigie Boy never buys games new, right? He's, he's a bloody skin flint. He'll agree with me. <laughs> When it comes, well, I say that when it comes to sorry, that that sounds bad, but when it comes to buying games for himself, he's a skinflint, uh, not to his friends. But he's he's he will not pay full whack for games unless it is something uberly special, um, or if he's just not got no option because he's going to be playing it on launch with everybody or something. So for the first time in a really long time, I've seen him fork out for a game that is a single player game that's not online, at full price. And I don't know whether it was seeing me buying it that spurred him, spurred him to get it, because he must have noticed that I'd been playing it on my uh, my profile on PlayStation or something, because he sent me a text saying, "When did you get Final Fantasy?" Um, and that was the that was it. That was the conversation. But then he, as he got into it, I mentioned to him, you know, I said, "Bear in mind, this it's not the whole game." Uh, no, I said, "Why did you buy it?" And he said, "Oh, because it's one of my favourite games of all time, the original." And I said, well, yeah, I said, but bear in mind, that's not the whole game. It's only part of the original. And then he was like, what? And I can, like, if you keep up with game chit chat and, and stuff or pre-launch stuff to do with games, I can understand that we're going to know that that's episodic, right? But when he looked at that online and bought it, there was nothing there telling him, like, this game is going to come in three parts or, you know, it doesn't even say Final Fantasy Remake Part 1. It doesn't, te there's nothing on that game that tells you that you're not getting a whole story. You know what I mean? And it's a little bit like, I mean, I don't know, like, the Walking the Walking Dead games, did the Walking Dead games, games say the Walking Dead 2 and Walking Dead 3? I can't remember, but... Like when you say Final Fantasy VII rem uh, remake, someone who comes along that doesn't follow gaming like we do on this channel or whatever, and and doesn't know any of that history about the fact they've decided to launch it episodically or whatever, I mean that suggests that you are getting a remake of the Final Fantasy VII game, and you're not. <laughs> you're getting part of it. So it, you know, I understand. I do. I understand what Aaron's te telling me, and 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 I understand it from playing it. It is a full game, in its own right. I mean, it's probably looking at the amount of time I've put into it, and Aaron's saying that I'm probably about halfway through. It's probably going to be a forty to fifty hour playthrough for me, because I'm doing all the side stuff. I'm taking my time wandering around and doing some of the side games, and just you know. So there's loads to do in it. It is justifiably a game of its own right, and the money that I've paid for it is absolutely fine. But I think it's only fair to state somewhere in the box that it is part one. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, because what's going to happen with part two? Are you going to be able to play part two without having been playing part one? Because that would make absolutely no sense whatsoever. So I don't know how they're going to do it because, like, you you would you would surely have to have played the first one in order for your save to continue into the second game, unless they've done something particularly clever. And please don't put any spoilers all over the 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 comments, um, sort of trying to explain it. But there has to be a thought process there. You have to have progressed from the first game to the second part of the game, or, or it gives you some. You know, like the, the like the Bioware games do. If you've not played, you know, Mass Effect One, then you can just stick in a bunch of criteria at the beginning, and it will say right off you go. But then what happens to all the leveling up and all that you've done with um with with Cloud and so I don't yeah I I don't understand like how that's going to be released and why it's not being called Part One Two Three. 
Um, and if it's being released episodically, then surely it has to be that you've got to have the first one before you buy the second one, before you buy the third one. It would. It's, it's the only thing that makes sense. So anyway, it'll be interesting to see what they do with it. But that's the... That's the crux of what I've been on with this this week. When I've not been just binge watching some TV and stuff, that's pretty much all I've been up to. I haven't. I did other than the twelve k I did on Monday. I didn't do my midweek run because the weather was so rubbish. Um, the the weather's getting better again now, so I'll be able to go out on Sunday for a run um, and then get it going again there before I do the decking or whatever. And that's been me. But that's been me, folks. But that's that's the reason that I've not been posting up video footage for you people to see. Uh, but I will get back to it, don't worry. So, the two gaming things that have happened, which are quite exciting, uh, certainly one of them is for me, uh, the... Uh, which one came first? I'm trying to remember now. I think it was the Xbox announcement. But anyway, both Xbox and Ubisoft have both come up with something that's, that's going on uh, in the coming weeks and months. But certainly, we'll talk about Xbox... We'll talk Xbox first because the the Assassin's Creed thing might go on a little bit. Xbox have Xbox have got a or Xbox inside uh, inside Xbox, inside Xbox next week, uh, this coming week on the seventh at four p.m. British summer time. So that's four p.m. UK. I'll let I'll let other people in other countries work that one out for themselves. And there's going to be an event on inside uh, inside Xbox, which is going to be all about the games for the Xbox Series X and showing off gameplay footage from the Xbox Series X on a, a multitude of, of games. Now, it seems to be that they're suggesting third-party titles at the minute, but fingers crossed we might get something a bit special on the Halo front, maybe, or see a bit more of an uber up version of Gears of War 5 and how it looks on... Uh, yeah, yeah, Gears 5, yeah. Uh, on the because they did a Gears Five like this is we haven't touched it at all changing anything put it into the Series X and it like loads four times faster and all this sort of stuff but they are going to enhance it for the X which means the Series X which means it's going to be you know having a lot more benefit to it so they might show off some more stuff like that but you can almost well in fact you can guarantee that you're going to see the first gameplay footage of Valhalla, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, which we'll talk about in a bit. Um, but, you know, and a, and a multitude of other things. But it's the first proper chance I think we're going to see to to see what these get, to see what these Xbox Series X or next-gen games are going to look like. So it's quite exciting, that I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. I think it's the first of what's going to be possibly a monthly thing for Xbox just giving us more and more until we hit that release date. We still haven't got release dates for either consoles yet. Um, PlayStation is still well behind showing anything, really. We've seen the controller and we've seen the inside specs. We don't know what it looks like. And we've not seen any gameplay footage that I'm aware of at all. Um, so we... No, we haven't. No, we haven't. I've not. I don't recall any footage from a, a PlayStation Four. But there's still not any whispers or anything. There's no like. They literally just drop something on us, whenever they feel like Xbox have done something. They think oh, we better <laughs> better throw something down, people. I'm sure they'll be fine. I still think the PlayStation Five is going to be an uber piece of kit and really, really, really nice to use. I think the speed of it's going to be incredible when it comes to loading screens and stuff. And I think it's going to be super quiet unlike the pro which I, I mean i love the pro but it's a it's a, fans are really noisy when you put a game in like final fantasy or any of the first party ones and it, the fans are going hell for leather in it and they have since day one so it's not because it's dirty or anything and it's the same with the original playstation 4 they just they just don't have particularly good cooling in them they're just fan 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 uh, i mean the xbox original came in such a big case that they were able to get more airflow around it and it was super quiet that machine and then the xbox series x came with liquid cooling in it so that's what enabled that to be super quiet it's part of the reasons i love playing on that platform so there you are so we've got this this announcement for next week so i'll definitely be watching that and then i'll probably do a vlog on what we've seen thereafter hopefully there'll be enough to talk about um, but I think this is it now. We're going to start seeing things drop. And I can't imagine that Sony are going to be too far behind this reveal that they're about to do. They're not going to be what are left that far behind. I think part of Sony's problem is, I, I think 
they're they're kind of between a rock and a hard place because they don't want to take away the sting of excitement from the last of us part two coming out in june and the ghost of Tsushima coming out in july was it they're a month apart aren't they so you know they've got two massive titles i mean god i mean if microsoft had those two titles just about to land i mean they would just be creaming themselves people yeah that is two gigantic titles coming out right on the on the dawn really of uh of a new console coming out so i think the problem they've got is if they start ubering up the new ps5 those are going to be kind of left behind a little bit with the excitement so it's all down to how they market it though because if they market them immediately with like you know here's the ps5 version of these games running on a ps5 in comparison to the ps4 and stuff like that i think then you're going to start getting people excited for both anyway you know um so yeah super excited about that and then on the tail side of it we got um uh, an announcement from ubisoft i think it was yesterday or the day before about the new assassin's greed i think i think there was already rumors that it was going to be called valhalla and it was set in the the viking world and stuff so it's set in britain and it's the vikings uh, seems to be from the trailer the vikings invading and battles with the the kings that are already here at the time and stuff uh, to be honest the trailer looked a bit more it looks a bit more like Braveheart than it did anything else. <laughs> it's like, literally, like the whole battle sequence, other than like the boats look, you know, the, the boats did look Viking and stuff. When you actually got onto the battlefield, it certainly it looked a bit more Braveheart than it did uh, Assassin's Creed. But, um, I mean, I'll give it to Ubisoft. They know how to make a fantastic... Um, trailer that's not a gameplay trailer you know what i mean like like a movie trailer for a game they've always been good at doing that because the big the big thing is going to be the gameplay i mean they have as as, as aaron bruce said he he said like they, they've they've basically revitalized that franchise which looked like it was dying i mean it had reached a point where they were trying to do one every year and it was just getting fewer and fewer and fewer people buying it constantly getting you know it was constantly getting attacked because it was never finished properly and there was you know issues at launch and massive updates to fix it and so you know they took a break for a few years and they came back with odd uh try to remember now it was odyssey wasn't it and then it was the other one i'm forgetting the name of so there was the the egypt one and the greek one and then and now there's valhalla so they have completely revamped that entire thing bringing it into whole new worlds whole new sort of um you know sort of god well i don't know if the, the gods aren't really spoken about but you know what i mean like a whole new, what's the word i'm looking for people i'm a massive brain <laughs> mythos and stuff you know like a whole a whole different mythos for each one and worlds to to play around in my problem with them is like aaron brew gave me his copy of uh odyssey i think it was no origins origins then odyssey yeah origins was the egypt one odyssey was the greek one and now there's valhalla he gave me origins because he'd finished playing it i think he platinumed it anyway he wasn't going to play it again and um i started playing it and I, it was a beautiful game got into it to a certain extent but again it was the battle mechanic that wound me up i was like it's just it's not i just i didn't i just wasn't getting it again the sneaking about is always fun, but when it comes to a one-on-one -on -one fight, I just it's the usual kind of like they still hadn't nailed it, and they're still it, it always, 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 no matter what they do with it, it always comes down to the missions they give you on the map because it's always like go to this point and then view it with your hawk or whatever it is, <laughs> and then that area clears, and then you can see all the th places you've got to go and the things you've got to collect. The problem for it is, and a lot of games have taken that format since, but the problem is, if the stuff you're doing in those areas isn't interesting, then it becomes dull and boring. And especially if you've got some form of OCD, or even a tiny bit, where you want to get everything done, it just becomes really monotonous. And in the end, with a game like that, there's two things that will happen. I'll either walk away one day and just inevitably never come back, or I'll just try and crack right through the story without doing any of that stuff. And more often than not, it's the first of those options. But, you know, that's not saying it's a bad game, but just for me, it just isn't interesting stuff. If you compare it to something like The Witcher, th uh, Witcher 3, um, where 
everything I did in that game was interesting. Like every side quest, every, everything had something of vast interest when I did it. A great backstory, a great char- set of characters or character. Everything was interesting to play through. And you got most of your rewards from actually doing those quests and the, the main story. Not the not just running around killing stuff. It got you next to nothing. Um, so the more that Assassin's Creed goes toward RPG country... Now, bear in mind, I've not played the Greek one, which was supposed to be even better than Origins. But, um, yeah, I mean, it, it's... It still had that. It's never hooked me back in. I think the most fun I ever got out of an Assassin's Creed game is still the first one. <laughs> you know, it's. I mean, it is well dated now, but I, I still love that time, that era. That era, where, where, and I'm um, going to forget the character's name now, but that era and character were my favourite. Um, the Italian one... So two, yeah, I enjoyed two actually as well. It was a little bit more rounded and it gave you a bit more interesting stuff to do. Like, I think it was two that you were able to, like... Is it two where you, you buy the prostitute play? I don't know. It's the little mini town, isn't it? You can, it's got, like, prostitute parlors and stuff in it. But you've got, like, a mini town that you can upgrade and stuff. And that was really interesting to do and you wanted to get the points for it. But it kind of ran out a bit quick. Um, and then they kind of just dragged the hell out of that thing. <laughs> And kept doing the same Ezio with the same character for like twenty odd games and everything. It was three, wasn't it? Um, so anyway, it's going to be interesting to see the gameplay footage of it because, as I say, they know how to sell a movie clip. Ubisoft they always have. They always come up with a stunning trailer. It's always a movie trailer, and then it's game gameplay after that. So it's all going to come down to the gameplay and how interesting it is to do all the stuff they've put in that world. Because I think I've yet to play an Ubisoft game where I was that interested in doing any side stuff. And it's making the side stuff interesting that keeps you in the world. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see it. But And it's also, I, I suppose, inevitably going to get compared to how well they do the Viking type stuff in comparison to how Skyrim did it way back in the day. And is it as soaked in its history as that? Or even to God of War, to some extent where it's taken that uh, that mythology and, and, and used it. Um, sort of Nord mythology. So it's going to be really interesting to see what they've done with it and how, how, how soaked in, in that mythology they've got it and how interesting they've made everything. Because if you can't do any... I mean, to be honest, like the mythologies they've picked, the Egyptian, the Greek and the, and the, the Viking mythology are all soaked so heavily in so much interest that to not get a lot of interesting stuff in there is almost a waste, you know. There's so much story to be told. Um, and I don't remember from the Egyptian one any any of that being soaked into at all or do, do, or or dived dived dove into <laughs> at all. Not do, and not to any great extent. There was didn't seem to be anything magical happening other than me. It was very it was very earthed so far as you. It wasn't like there was gods and stuff all cracking around all over the place it was very earth and human so there you are anyway i shall not ramble on much more about it but i'm i'm still excited to see what they've done with that world also i think this is going to be our first it's possibly going to be our first chance to see i know it will be because it's a series that is a series x event next week and I'm pretty sure that they that Xbox said, that, or one of them did, Ubisoft might have said it's going to be shown at that event, which means we're going to see what that game looks like on an Xbox Series X. So, yeah, so it's going to be super exciting to see that and whatever else they're going to let us see next week at this event because it's going to be our first proper look at what we can expect games to look like, certainly in the early days of these new consoles, which are twice as powerful as the top end versions we've got now. So it's twice as powerful as the One X and twice as powerful as the, in fact, it's even more when it comes to the PlayStation, I think. Um, it might be, Teraflops wise, I think it is, because that's not, four, oh no, it might be, might be double, yeah, it might be double, because I think that's four Teraflops, it might be a bit more, I think that's four point something and the PS5 is 9.2 teraflops or something, so it's a bit more than double that sort of power anyway. But of course, the entire architecture is changing for both of them, so we're going to get more than just power benefits. We're going to get all these speed benefits as well, for things loading and all that. So yeah, so it's going to start cracking into exciting times. And of course, 
I'm not overly sure we're going to get the shortages and the problems that people think we might with the coronavirus because certainly China seemed to have got back on some form of normality so far as business goes. Um, we'll see America are still in a bad way with the amount of cases. I think they've just gone over a million, haven't they? Um, or is that world? No. I can't remember now. But they've got a lot of cases anyway and a lot of deaths are way above everybody else. So I don't know what's going to happen with... I don't know what I don't know what's involved for either... Well, certainly launching in America is going to be one thing. I don't know how much actual production is done in America. Certainly for Xbox there might be, but I'm not sure about PlayStation. Um, but I think it's more to do with components. Of course, not everything's shut down. There's still... Factories are still making things. It's just, you know, a lot of places are locked down. Anyway, we'll have to wait and see. But things seem to be lightening slightly so far as the coronavirus goes. But we're not going to be in any sort of normality until we get uh, a cure, people. So there's always, even when the lockdowns are semi-lifted, we're still going to be doing a lot of social distancing. We're still going to be queuing up to get into shops when they're busy and, and only a certain amount of folk in. All that sort of stuff's going to stay for a long time yet. We are where we are, people. You know, it's better that everyone's safe than we get our consoles on time. You know, we can wait a few months if we need to. But it does, doesn't does sound like we're going to have to. From You would think there'd be whispers of delays at the minute if things weren't easing up. But we haven't had any. So there you are. Can I just say flagons up to you all? That's all I've got to say about all of that. I didn't even have a, a little sip halfway through or at the beginning, as I remember. Um, yeah, that was it. So it was the two main main topics we had this week, which was the event next week. That's on the the Microsoft event is on the seventh at four p.m. British summer time, and um, we will see more of Valhalla on that. Uh, so far as my next week goes, I was I agreed with my boss that I may or may not extend my holiday into next week, depending on what the weather's like. So uh, it looks like it's going to be nice enough for me to get the rest of this work done and enjoy another week off, which will leave me one week to take somewhere between the end of that week and July. So I may well go on to that. And yeah, hopefully, um, I think I'm about, half, as I say, halfway through Final Fantasy VII. I'd like to crack through Final Fantasy VII before I record anything else, because I am thoroughly enjoying it, and I just want to continue to enjoy a game for a while. Um, I bought Rise of Skywalker today with some birthday monies that I had. Um, so that's the that's the collection now finished. Well, the Skywalker collection, certainly. Though I'm sure there'll be more to add to it. I mean, I might end up buying box sets of, of certain things like The Mandalorian, which I haven't seen yet. There's a new series being done about... Um, I'm going to forget his name again now. A Mexican guy from uh, Rogue One. I can't remember his name now. Came back to me earlier today and I've forgotten it again. Um, but yeah, they're making a series about his character before Rogue One and what he got up to in his in his other days. And they brought the same actor back as well. And of course, we've got the series of uh, Ben Kenobi series coming with Ewan McGregor. So they all might sneak their way into the Star Wars collection at some point. But I think I'm probably more likely to check them out on Disney Plus first. I haven't invested in Disney Plus. I'm going to wait until there's more content on there so far as that I would watch would go. At the moment, there's just one season of Mandalorian. The second season's coming soon. Of course, there's going to be massive delays to just about everything because of coronavirus for, for a long time yet, I think. Um, so I think we're going to end up <laughs> with not an awful lot for about half a year at least because the things that would have landed will have been delayed. So there you are. That's it, people. I think if I blab on any more, I will just be, frankly, wasting your time. <laughs> I hope you're all doing well. I hope you're you're managing through the lockdowns in your particular countries, wherever you might be. Um, I know some of you, I know a lot of you are in America, so keep strong, people. It isn't a hoax. <laughs> it definitely isn't a hoax, people. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't understand, like, and I'm not going to have a massive dig at America. I understand that it's a very small proportion of America people. You're a beautiful people in a beautiful country. Um, but there are some mad folk out there that I don't understand how you can see this many tragedy, tragedy, sorry, this scale of tragedy of this many people passing away and see the numbers and see on the news the mass graves or the you know i mean how can you see that and then try and tell people it's a hope i mean what are you on about like and then mass gathering 
around each other without proper protection or, you know, you shouldn't even be stood together. I mean, it's absolute madness. Like, you know, I understand like people, there, there was one guy saying that he was, he was demonstrating more about the fact that the big corporate companies were allowed to stay open and the smaller medium companies were all forced to shut, even though they had provisions in place to protect people and all this sort of stuff. I understand that sort of uh, argument and I felt for that guy, but um, there's an argument there. Absolutely. But, you know, you can't run around saying it's a hoax when, you know, when so many people have died. It's just, it's incredible. Like, I, I don't understand the mentality of it at all. Anyway, I'm not going to want to rant about the coronavirus again. <laughs> I think we've all heard enough about it, haven't we, people? But I'm going to say this. I hope you're keeping safe. I hope you're keeping well. If anyone's been affected by it, I hope things are, are getting better for you. Um, I am always here to comment on any of my videos. There's a t I know I haven't posted up any new content this week, but there is a a ton of backlog on my channel, people, of stuff that you probably haven't watched, um, and you could give a give a viewing to and and leave comments on. There's a there's a gazillion things there, and you can always leave comment. I always reply to people, so um, I'm as as much for a good chin wag as anyone else. So do leave comments on any video, no matter how old it is, and I will I will pick it up and, and respond to you. Um, and thank you to, we are approaching people, we're getting very close to the 6,000 mark. I think we're on 5,780 blah at the time of recording this. So it is creeping its way up to an, another massive milestone. So thank you to everyone who's been subbing. And to all those that have continued to, to be subbed to my channel over all this time. And um, we'll do a proper big thank you for that, if and when we reach that 6,000 mark. Um, it does, as I say, it always does speed up the old subs when I do put fresh content up. It's only natural. People see the channel still active. Uh, it's interesting, isn't it? It's because like you've, you've, I've got thousands of videos there, or hundreds at least, and um, and yet it's the fresh stuff that that keeps the subs coming in mainly. Um, you know, it's almost like there's a thing like. People want to feel connected so far as, oh, that was up yesterday. I can comment on it. But if it's something from three years ago, you know, it, almost every comment starts with sorry for the delay in this <laughs> response as if I wouldn't answer this late in the day. Um, but there's, a, there's some fantastic library of, of stuff that I've played through or games that might be of interest to you if you're a gamer or an RPG player or whatever. So, yeah, have a good look through. Have a look. I try and put, like, every game should have a playlist so if you go and look at the playlists that are on my channel you should see a whole a whole screen of stuff i mean they're all not they're not all complete let's plays but there's enough there to get you interested in games and see other stuff that i've been trying out anyway there you are people i'm rambling on now uh i'll say it once again flagons up to you all If your weekend hasn't started with one of these yet then maybe you should go and sort that out right now people i think <laughs> It has been an honour and a privilege serving for you once again in this vlog of mine, and I shall see you all next time, folks. Take it easy. Bye.